Just accused, handcuffed, humiliated. Tonight, Five Investigates shows us what happened to a young black man in Columbia Heights who was trying to cash his paycheck. Lawyers and advocates say his experience is part of a national phenomenon known as banking while black. That man tells investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen he was racially profiled when a manager called police minutes after he walked into a U.S. bank branch last year. This is a story you will only see on Nightcast. That man, Joe Morrow, spoke with us in detail about what happened. U.S. Bank, however, would not go on camera. It settled with Morrow after we started asking questions. But we were still able to obtain police body camera video of that incident that the bank does not want you to see. When police got the call to a busy U.S. Bank branch in Columbia Heights last year, a call for a fraudulent check and a suspect posing a threat. How's it going? This is how they found 23-year-old Mississippi native Joe Morrow sitting in a chair in the bank manager's office, leaning back with his hands folded. Police blurt out branch manager John Asquith as state law requires because he did not want us to see or hear him in the video. Morrow wanted everyone to know what happened. I just got through working like 12 hours, I think. His job at UNFI, a grocery supplier better known as Super Value in Hopkins. Closer to home, Morrow stopped here at U.S. Bank in Columbia Heights to cash his paycheck for $900. Despite having an account, that simple transaction was anything but. And they was all looking at me and just staring at me. And then looking at the check and then staring at me again, I'm like, now I'm already knowing like what they think of the, the check fake. The manager, she, he came over and said, Joe Morrow, your check fake. And I said, what? He said, you people are always coming in here with fake checks. Who do you think he meant? Black people. I worked there, bro. And I'm going to report to the Morrow continued pleading his case with police sergeant Justin Pletcher in the room. Morrow's claim of racial profiling immediately met with this warning. Joe, I'm going to First of all, okay? Don't say anything stupid because you're just going to get arrested for it. Right. Still sitting in the chair as the sergeant held his ID and his check, Morrow insisted it was the bank who owed him an explanation. Two minutes later, What's the next? a second officer arrives and the bank manager asks police to take Morrow to an adjacent office. The manager told the officer, right, can you get him out of my office? He might touch anything on my desk. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, that's, that's when I got super mad. Like, what? I'm going to touch something on your desk. Yo. That anger only visible for a second. Yo, let's go over there, man. When he complies with officer's orders and stands up. Okay, let's make something. A split yeah, second, yeah. Morrow says he'll never forget. And like, definitely when I got handcuffed and stuff, everybody looking like, when I'm getting out, coming out of his office, I was handcuffed, so people are looking. How does that make you feel? Like, crazy, like, like I'm a criminal or something, like, like I, I'm doing, like, something bad. Like, I'm, I actually came here with a fake check. In his report, the sergeant later wrote that Morrow flexed at John, the bank manager, in a threatening manner. I didn't threaten him. I, I got up, like, you know, in a, in a, in a like, you know. Like a, like a man. Do you have anything on you that could hurt harmful clean anyway? Still handcuffed, Morrow offered more evidence of his innocence. I got the checks to Neil said what day he started and all that, how many hours I worked, all that. I could have came here and showed him that. According to the police report, the bank manager said he'd received a lot of fraudulent checks using the UNFI logo. Morrow says the manager claimed he already called the company and confirmed the check was fake. So, who do we need to call? But this body camera video shows the bank manager did not actually make that critical call until after Morrow was already in handcuffs. So, it's a real... The check number's real. Morrow's employer confirmed the check was, in fact, real. There's no question my man if he'd been white. This would never happen. Five investigates showed the video to a community leader. Are you seeing that okay? I am. The founder of a nationally recognized implicit bias training program for police. But this is Minnesota. This is not who we are. And University of Minnesota professor Samuel Myers Jr. In 2015, he authored this study of discriminatory practices at banks in the Twin Cities. And he's focused on racial disparities in financial transactions for 35 years. I wish I could say that this was ambush. I wish we could say that this was an outlier. But I 
happens a lot. Myers, who is deaf. So this is it here. Watch the body camera video with us over Zoom with the assistance of captioning. We as black people are aware that these things happen at banks, at grocery stores, at supermarkets. This is a classic example of instances where things escalated beyond what they needed to escalate to. Okay, John, let's get these cuffs up. But Morrow's ordeal did not end when the handcuffs came off. So can I talk to you, man to man, real quick? For more than 10 minutes, Morrow remained in this office. They're making fake checks with that logo on, right? Sergeant Pletcher did most of the talking. So what the branch manager has to do is call to make sure it's a good check. I need you to stay calm for that, okay? Because when you when you start acting like this, it makes you look even get to me. I'm not just... No, 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 I know. I'm saying but when, you, when you start getting upset and irate, it makes you look guilty. Uh, well, you're acting guilty. And so the question is, what is acting guilty? Tell me, what is acting guilty? I'm sorry, but this is who I am. You blame me here before creating the racism that he's feeling. Don't do anything stupid. It was another part of this exchange <laughs> that struck a nerve with Tyrone Terrell. So play calm, play cool, and wait for you to be validated. Okay. Oh, my God. The former director of the St. Paul Department of Human Rights and the president of the African-American Leadership Council says the sergeant's choice of words matters. Wait to be validated. That's 450 years of history of slavery. Do we got to still wait for white America to validate us? Come on. Columbia Heights police declined our request for an interview, but in a statement, Chief Lenny Austin said his department reviewed the incident and found the officer's actions were reasonable and they conducted themselves professionally. And if you feel it's a racist thing, okay, handle it differently. Sergeant Pletcher wouldn't go on the record with us, but still sent us links to network news programs. If I'm not on the same side as my community... And I am feeling them, and I am feeling this badge. And he was praised on national TV for how he handled a call involving a black health inspector two days after the death of George Floyd. I think we need more police officers to speak up. But Pletcher is not talking about this video that few have seen until now. There are going to be plenty of people, I imagine, mm -hmm. who will say, this officer acted admirably. He spoke calmly. He told plenty, him to calm plenty, down. Plenty of white people. I'm looking through the lens of a black man who dealt with too many of these cases. Was the flinching, so-called flinching, visible in the video? Well, I'll take you back to it. Oh, Lori Friedell is a professor at the University of South Florida and the founder of the Fair and Impartial Very Policing Training Program. I did not discern anything in the video that showed Mr. Morrow as being threatening. Um, maybe they saw things that I did not see, or maybe this could be related to one of the implicit associations that's well documented in the research. And that research shows that many of us see more threats in people of color. Fridell commended the sergeant for doing what she called a debrief with Morrow and advising him that he could file a complaint against the bank. And this is very important in policing. You know, when you've had an interaction, sometimes it can be very uh, tension reducing to sit down with the person and say, OK, this is what was going on. But that tension still apparent a year later. No, I'm a little nervous with the cameras, but yeah. When Morrow sat down with us for this interview, by that time, his lawyer had sent two letters to U.S. Bank demanding a settlement and an explanation. They've never taken any accountability. They've never truly apologized to Mr. Morrow. In October, U.S. Bank declined our request to interview manager Asquith or anyone else with the bank and instead sent us this statement saying, U.S. Bank is committed to fairness toward everyone we serve regardless of race, adding, we dispute the facts as they're being portrayed to you. Two weeks later, the bank quietly reached an undisclosed settlement, meaning no one with U.S. U.S. Bank or Morrow can ever talk about what happened here again. Hey, Joe, man. I'm sorry you had to go through this, thing. Any additional apology, now confidential. Keep working hard. Again, what's almost lost in all of this is that Joe Morrow was already a customer with U.S. Bank. He says he had an account there. We reached back out to U.S. Bank one more time, and last week a spokesperson added that the bank's own internal investigation found nothing to indicate that Morrow's race was a factor in the service he received. Of course, as you heard, lawyers, experts, and advocates are not convinced. They say this is part of what's been called 